Hello, everyone, and welcome. I, tr I tried a high school track. Um, I am not an athlete, but, you know, I like being part of a team. I wanted the cool sweatsuit, and I was awful. I was, I tried, and I don't know why I tried hurdles. I think I tried hurdles because I knew I wasn't a fast runner, and so I thought that would be easier. My brother, older brother did hurdles, and I thought, John can do it. I for sure can do it. I couldn't. I did that shorter one. And honest to God, like this is how bad I am. I like now I know it's in like millimeters, but then I think it was like the 50 yard dash hurdles. I'm not even sure. I just know that from the get go, I was dead last. And not by a little, by a whole, whole lot. And I got to about the middle. I don't even know how many of you jump over felt like 200, but I think it's like maybe eight or six. And I got to the middle and I was so last, like people were done. And I legit stopped in the middle because I was going to quit because I was that embarrassed and that horrified. But I had some teammates on the side that just were like, come on, Chris, come on, keep going, keep going. So I finished the race, just horrified. I mean, honest to goodness, it was just, it was just, oh, it was just awful. I was, and the worst part about it is I have zero idea where my coach was. It was my teammates that carried me through and um, I didn't quit. That's the super duper good no news. But now fast forward to about eight years ago. So fast forward and rewind um, to about eight years ago when I went to um, a local cross country meet in Janesville, which is where I live, and to watch the Fort Atkinson cross country. That's why I'm wearing this t-shirt. And um, Coach Reed, Coach Chris Reed, not only celebrated the superstars, but he stayed on the course until every single runner crossed the finish line. And on top of that, at the end of the whole meet, when he's celebrating, you know, everybody who did well, like he's talking about people's personal best and they could have come in like 48th place, but he's like, and this kid had his best race ever today. And everybody's so excited. And every single kid's face was so excited to be part of that team. And I swear to God, like I wished I could have rewound and took cross country. Um, because I wouldn't have quit if I had a coach like Chris Reed. So welcome to Class Acts with Chris. Real educators, real leaders, real talk. Meet Coach Chris Reed. He is the PE and health teacher at Fort Atkinson Middle School, along with their athletic director. He also is both the middle school and high school track and cross country coach. Welcome, Chris, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I am so excited about this because I do know Chris, um, but I don't know a lot about how you started. So let's go right to the starting line, pun totally intended, and tell me how your teaching career began. Well, as I, as I look back on, you know, what caused me to take this career path, I originally as I was entering college, hadn't really decided if I was gonna be a teacher or not. Um, but I can remember sitting at registration with my mom, registering for my freshman year classes and thinking, you know, this is kind of a big decision, what career path I wanna take. And I thought, why don't I pick something that I know I've always enjoyed and something that would be, you know, fun to, to do as a career. So I said, what's better and more fun than being a Phi Ed teacher and being involved with athletics? So I decided on that registration day that I was going to be a Phi Ed and health major and minor and hopefully get into some coaching. That's impressive though, because it's very rare for a freshman to start and finish with the I mean, with the start still in mind. So that's impressive. 
And you did, you did think about coaching at that moment in time too. Absolutely. What led you, what led you to, where'd you go to school? I should start that. Well, I grew up in Wisconsin over in the southwestern part of the state. Um, originally, I uh, grew up on a farm over there and went to Fenimore High School, which is a small town about two hours due west of Fort Atkinson, just on Highway 18. Just take a straight shot for two hours and you'll end up in my hometown of Fenimore. Um, and UW-Platteville is kind of the local university in that part of the state. And my farm was 10 minutes, 10 miles from Platteville. Um, my dad's family is from that area, so it was kind of a natural to to pick the local university. So I went to the UW of Platteville. Where did you student teach? I student taught in a school that um, my mom, when when she was when I was a kid growing up, my mom was an, a teacher's aide for a, a few years, and she was a teacher's aide in this district that is near Platteville called the Iowa Grant School District. It's a kind of a group of small little towns that had schools and they each little town of Livingston and Montford and Cobb and Rui and Linden had their own little elementary school and they kind of conglomerated into one school the year I started student teaching. So the year I student taught at Iowa Grant, it was a brand new school. Nice. Were there any educators when you were a student that influenced you? Oh, there's so many that I could give a shout out to here that I could take up the whole session. Um, <laughs> you know, giving props and shout outs and thank yous to teachers that I've had. Um, as I think back, even into my younger elementary days as a kid, I had teachers that, you know, left a mark on me as a person and as a teacher. Um, I, I consider it fortunate. I was fortunate enough to go to a small little school mm -hmm. in a town near Fenimore called Stitzer. And I had six kids in my class. And we shared a classroom with the another grade. So first and second were in one classroom. So we had like 12, 13 kids for two grades with the one teacher. And we'd rotate every two years, you'd have a different teacher. But I, I think I was fortunate to be in that setting just because we got a lot of personal attention from the teacher. Um, it was like a family atmosphere in that small little tiny little building that is no longer a school. I think somebody lives in the building now as their home. It was so small. Oh, wow. But even back when I was an elementary school teacher, I had teachers that every day of my teaching career, I can think of stories that kind of had an impact on me. And then even up through high school and middle school, um, I had coaches and teachers that weren't necessarily, you know, they weren't necessarily my FIA teacher. I had physics teachers, art teachers that had great impacts on me. And, and then of course, coaches. I think many people that are into coaching had coaches when they were athletes that, you know, had a little impact on them. Absolutely. You are the first Class X interview of 2021. And I'm sure most people are going to be thrilled to have 2020 behind them. In a PE setting, virtual has to look completely different. Talk a little bit how the pandemic has changed how you teach. And do you coach? Like, tell me a little bit about how, what's going on in your world because of this pandemic. Probably the largest impact, and this would be on all teachers in general, not just PE teachers, is when we're teaching virtually, is we lose that, that personal connection that we have with the kids. Um, when we have them in our classroom, 
it is it is so much different than looking at them on a screen where they're you know a couple inches by a couple inches in fact i jokingly told my class before all my classes before we went into winter break that you know the next time i see you um, it will be a new a new year thank goodness and you'll be much bigger i'm used to seeing you now with you know a screen that's two inches by two inches so i'll get to actually see you in person which will be nice so we you know we've lost that that personal connection and i'm sure i'm not the only teacher but that's kind of the joy of teaching is getting to know and connect with with your students another another thing that's challenging as a phi ed teacher is I'm not there with them while they're working out. So I'm kind of giving them the keys to the car, so to speak, and giving them some ideas and some workouts for them to do. And it's kind of up to them. So kids in all areas of education have had to take, you know, a larger role in their learning than, than maybe they're used to. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's just got to be hard. Do you still stay connected with like your student athletes? Um, we would during the season. Um, we had just the weirdest, wackiest cross country season that you can imagine. Um, so most of the schools in our conference didn't have cross country this, this fall. They, they have decided to have like a spring cross country season before their track seasons begin. Um, but Fort Atkinson and a couple local schools around here went in the fall. So we started out kind of normal where we had in-person practices, we had some meets scheduled. Um, we couldn't do some of the things that um, kind of make our program unique uh, because of some of the protocols that we had to follow. Um, but then all of a sudden in September, uh, we went all virtual, which meant that we couldn't have in-person practices. So then we were doing what we're doing right now. We'd connect with the kids each day through a Zoom, like team meeting, and and discuss and tell them what the daily workout would be, and and then they were kind of off on their own, hopefully doing the workout that they were supposed to do. So you know, it was it was so weird this year being able to have having to do that, and the same in class. Um, you know, the kids have have to take charge of their own learning and be responsible to do some of the things that, you know, their teachers are providing for them to do. And and when I'm when I'm with them in person, I can keep better tabs on, you know, their progress and how things are going. Absolutely. What advice, like what's the best piece of advice that you can give to that? that student especially the ones that are so excited about being a, a a track athlete or you know that might want to do it in college what kind of advice do you give them right now well luckily the, luckily this season we had a, a few kids on our team on our boys and girls team both which really stepped up in the leadership category and, you know, took charge on organizing their teammates and their friends and getting them together so that they would have you know, small pods of people that they could work with and work out with uh, rather than being by themselves. Um, so the advice I would give to, to kids is, you know, lean on your friends, lean on your classmates and teammates and, you know, feed off each other and work out together or do things together as, as much as you possibly can in, in their protocol settings. But, um, you know, don't, don't think that you have to do everything individually by yourself. So a couple of our kids this year were lifesavers since as coaches, we couldn't be there to motivate them or to be over them, hovering over them to make sure things were doing like they were supposed to. So these kids had to take charge and, and I'm, COVID I'm guessing was an opportunity. That is, I'm guessing that's learned as well, you know, so um, 
kudos to your whole coaching team on that. How about that? How about your health curriculum? Um, did, did that change? And was there enhanced talk about COVID-19? Was that incorporated? Does it change the way you, we move forward on stuff? In health, I didn't have a huge, huge change in curriculum wise. Um, the nice thing about health is that it's ever changing field and kids like to talk about things that are relevant and, and learn about things that are relevant. And one of our, one of our units of study in, in middle school health was diseases anyway. So even last year when, when we were still in person, um, questions would come up about COVID. So, um, you know, current events and current issues in health are, are always changing. And, and like I said, kids love to talk about those type of things. So it was an abundance of material for us to kind of delve into. Very good. All right, tell me about a time you felt like your teaching or your coaching had an impact on a student. Well, I just got an email before Christmas, actually, um, from from a former student and a former athlete that just graduated from college. Um, it'd been a long journey for them. Uh, they weren't as decisive in their career path as I was, I guess, when I was a freshman. Um, and they bounced around from school to school and changed majors a variety of different times. But I got such a sweet, nice email from this person thanking me for my impact that I had on them. That's so cool. I, I, I know it's true because that wasn't the only cross country meet that I've been at and often alumni come to watch. And I think that's really cool as well. What advice would you give somebody um, who's thinking about um, coming into teaching, particularly into PE health and maybe considering coaching? Um, just make sure that they're doing it for altruistic reasons, I guess, or reasons that they're comfortable with. Um, if you're doing it for the summers off or you're doing it for the luxurious pay that we get or the, you know, the high esteem that we're always talked about in the community, um, you might be disappointed. So making sure that you're picking a career that, um, first off, you better be, you better like being around kids, which made that an easy choice for me. Um, I love being around kids because they make me feel like a kid. They make me feel much younger than I might appear at times. Um, I wish we could turn the world over to kids. Uh, things, you know, adults sometimes ruin things. Kids would, I think, do a better job in, in many aspects of society now and running things. But, you know, make sure that you're able to relate to people. You have to be able to not only to relate to kids, but you have to be able to relate to adults as well. So you got to be collaborative with your, your staff. You have to be able to communicate effectively with parents or administrators. Um, so, you know, just be somebody that's approachable to all different types of people, kids and adults. Very good. Where do you go for inspiration or like resources and ideas for, for teaching? Um, well, once we went all virtual here back in, in March, I had to find those places. It was very easy as a veteran teacher. I think this is my 28th year of teaching now very easy to kind of fall in and be comfortable with you know things that you have been doing um, but then all of a sudden in March I had to scramble around and find places to, to, to get materials that would be more effective in a virtual setting so um, luckily I have a great a great department that we can collaborate real easily and get along really well and there's just some great fitness 
and health resources that I'd never even heard of prior to, you know, teaching virtually that I was able to find all kinds of helpful things. And, and there are great teachers throughout our country that are willing to share and put things like you're doing here. Um, I can find all kinds of things on YouTube or, or places like that that are, are relevant for a PE and health setting. No doubt, and you really nailed it when you said collaboration. I hear that often, and the teaching community is fantastic at that. What, what's your biggest challenge? Uh, my biggest challenge this year was I went all paperless. I now use a Google format for all of my classes, which I had been somewhat familiar with prior to you know teaching virtually, but this kind of accelerated me having to do that kind of stuff. So I went from you know not having kids have devices in my classroom and kind of an old school type of a classroom setting with you know papers and stuff and group work to a paperless classroom. So in, in many aspects, I felt like a first year teacher as probably all teachers in 2020 felt like, but I, I felt like this was my first year teaching. No doubt. And I'm, I'm sure you were phenomenal and guaranteed there was growth in there because anything we do that's uncomfortable, you do grow as a person. So um, I applaud all of you guys for being able to pivot on a dime and make it happen. How about tell me something that was really funny, something funny that happened in your class or in coaching, but that you just remember? Oof. Some of them I probably can't share on, on our, our meeting here, but, you know, the nice thing about teaching, and I, and I always joke with some of my department members about this and staff people that... You know, when I retire, if I decided to write a book, I would never run out of material. Every day, it seems like there are two or three things that happen that um, I've never experienced before. Or, you know, when you've been a veteran teacher, you think you've seen everything in my 28 years, but there's always something that a middle schooler will do or a high school athlete will do that... Uh, you know, is something I've never seen before that, and it's nothing that I, it's nothing big and huge, but just little tiny little things that just crack us up all the time. And if you can't use humor to help you survive through the day as a teacher, then you'll probably have a pretty short career. So, you know, be able to find those things either in yourself or in, in the kids and, and you have a good sense of humor about things to help you get through the day and the year. And I imagine in a health situation, um, the, the full gamut of what you probably have to teach gets a little bit tricky sometimes. So I'm glad that you probably can have a sense of humor that, that definitely helps. So, I don't know if you ever heard of James Lipton. He was the um, interviewer from the Inside the Actors Studio. He had a list of quick questions that he would ask his celebrity guest, um, and they would have to just answer on the fly. And so this is how we um, typically end our Class X um, <laughs> interviews. But I have to do it teacher style because he occasionally asks, like, you know, what your favorite curse word is. And so... We won't, we'll keep it family friendly and um, school friendly. So are you ready? I guess so, we'll see. Okay. All right, what's your favorite word? Howdy. <laughs> what's your least favorite word? Can't. What is your biggest saving grace? My family. What is the biggest pet peeve in the classroom? 
Negativity. If money wasn't an issue, what would you buy for your class? A fast device. What profession would you try if you couldn't teach? Sportscaster. Best gift ever from a student? Chocolate. What is the best way we can help a teacher? Uh, just be supportive. And your favorite thing about teaching or coaching? Just the, the vast amount of personalities that I've been able to interact with over my career. Kids that are someday going to take care of me when I'm in the nursing home or run the world. And I get to see them as an unfinished product, which is kind of neat. I swear to God, that gave me a chill. That is very cool because you're so right. That is hands down my favorite part of the interview. It's not just, a, it's just a great way to cross the finish line. They, I just was, I was looking up coaching quotes and I ran across a good coach improves your game. A great coach improves your life. No doubt, Chris, that defines you. You are absolutely a class act. This is the part where I normally would shake your hand, but I just want to say thank you so much. And I appreciate that you took the time out. And I mean, really on behalf of all the students that you teach, thank you for what you do. Well, thank you and NASCO, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. If you have any questions for Coach Chris Reed or you want to know more about Class X, please comment below and make sure to subscribe to the NASCO Education Channel. 